Hello everyone, I'm Mary Lori Lightfoot, and it's my honor to welcome you all to the Carol Robertson Center for Learning's first ever annual celebration, which is themed Recess. Although we can't gather in person, this is our opportunity to have fun, celebrate, and remind ourselves just how critical playtime is for every child's learning and development. For over 40 years, the Carol Robertson Center for Learning has been a community anchor for children and families across our city. Serving more than 1,000 children and their families through high quality education and one-on-one -on -one support services. The center also partners with families to fortify their role as a child's first teacher because when all children have enough to eat, reliable housing, and a healthy family, there are no limits to their educational success. Furthermore, the Carol Robertson Center is a valued partner to our city, delivering early Head Start and Head Start programming to our youngest learners and serving remote CPS learners during the pandemic. I hope you will join me in supporting the center's mission to positively impact the futures of our children and create a more equitable society. Thank you all so much and please continue to be safe. Good evening, folks, families, friends, and funders of the Carol Robertson Center for Learning. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, for opening our evening. And welcome, everyone, to the Carol Robertson Center for Learning's first ever virtual annual celebration. My name is Maurice Randall, coming to you from the Little Village site of the Carol Robertson Center for Learning. It is my immense pleasure to act as your humble MC tonight. Tonight's 45-minute event will move quicker than the double dutch jump ropers on our playground as we celebrate the high standards, the quality education, and the programs of the Kale Robertson Center for Learning. But first, since our theme is recess and it's been a very hard year for all of us, let's have a little fun. We're gonna play a game I like to call Simon Says Do What Maurice Says. Okay, y'all ready? <laughs> Maurice says, touch your nose. Go ahead, I know you have some little ones near you too. Marie says, pat your belly. <laughs> Marie says, make a donation to the Kel Robertson Center for Learning. <laughs> okay, I got you with that one, didn't I? But really, you can text recess to 41444 anytime during tonight's event. Tonight's event is a fundraiser and a friend raiser. So we will be reminding you of the opportunity to support the amazing organization and all of its good work. Now for our first Did You Know segment. Did you know Carol Robertson Center for Learning's mission is to educate, enrich, and empower children and families? Tonight will be fun. It will be inspiring. And there will even be a little magic. How else do you think I just zipped outside and put on my recess gear in a split second? Now, here to inspire us all is Dr. Latanya McDade, Chief Education Officer at Chicago Public Schools. Dr. McDade oversees all academic offices within the CPS Central Office and supports all principals and network chiefs in their leadership roles. A proud graduate of CPS herself, Dr. McDade is dedicated to the field of education and passionate about improving the quality of life for all children through an equity lens. Her mantra is education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. So last round of Marie Says. Marie Says, get ready for our keynote speaker, Chief of Education for Chicago Public Schools, Dr. Latanya McDade. Greetings, I am Latanya McDade, and I am the proud 
Chief Education Officer for Chicago Public Schools. I want to thank CEO Bella Mote, as well as the Center's Board of Directors for inviting me to participate in tonight's celebration. I was originally scheduled to speak with you a year ago, so I have been looking forward to this opportunity for a long time. My job at CPS is to support our teachers and school leaders in their work and to make sure that every student, regardless of their race, zip code, or country of origin, have equitable access to high quality education. I came to know the Carol Robertson Center for Learning early on in this work, and I was moved by the organization's name, which honors the ongoing journey towards social justice in this country and by its unwavering commitment to Chicago's most vulnerable children. This commitment is especially clear when it comes to early childhood education. There is no underestimating the importance of a child's first experience in school. Research tells us that a significant percentage of children who receive comprehensive early childhood education from birth to age five have better long-term outcomes in learning, health, social behaviors, and even employment. This is especially true for our English learners and students from limited income communities who can benefit more from these programs than their more advantaged peers. The Carol Robertson Center's focus on kindergarten readiness is exactly what our most vulnerable children need. It is helping ensure that they enter CPS schools with the language, reading, and math skills to hit the ground running. And now, with their recent expansion grant from Head Start, the center will be able to get even more children on the right path early. But their reach extends far beyond our city's youngest learners. Their drive to support and empower students when they are away from the classroom is at the heart of the center's history. And that work was never more critical than during this past year. Like districts across the country, CPS was forced to close our schools last spring as a result of the pandemic. But thankfully, we have now been able to welcome many more students back to in-person learning. But the majority of our students were away from their classrooms for a year or more. Partners like the Carol Robertson Center were our saving grace during that very challenging time. The center opened its doors to our students, purchasing PPE and modifying classrooms so the children who needed it would have a place to engage in online learning. For many of our parents, this meant they would not have to choose between keeping their jobs and caring for their kids. They could go to work each day knowing that their children would be fed, supervised, and most importantly, safe. CPS will always be grateful to the Carol Robertson Center for providing our families with this gift and for the care they take of our students when they are away from school. The center was started by a group of parents who were determined to save their children's after school program. And that commitment continues today. From literacy to STEM to the arts, this team is building on the foundation students are receiving in our schools while at the same time improving outcomes and experiences for their families. The CPS Carol Robertson Center Partnership is a model for how community-based organizations and school districts can work successfully together to provide students with a strong continuum of support. I want to congratulate the center on their outstanding work and thank them for being such a trusted partner to the students, families, and leaders of Chicago Public Schools. Thank you. Job well done.
Dr. McDade, thank you. Wow, I don't know about you, but I love learning about the partnerships the Carol Robertson Center has across the community. Did you know Carol Robertson Center was founded as an after-school program in the 70s? And now, 45 years later, the work spans from prenatal to age 17. The Carol Robertson Center is making a real impact today, defying the challenges that we have all faced during this extraordinary year. But that impact has been felt for decades. This organization has quite the legacy. Founded in 1976 by a small but determined group of community members, Carol Robertson Center has been making an impact in the community for 45 years. How does this amazing organization do that? Well, folks, it's a combination of pedagogical expertise coupled with compassion, empathy, and fun. So let's take a mini recess and have some fun. This is a game our teachers do with our little ones. It's called Clap Clap Snap Snap. You just watch me and follow my lead, okay? We're going to create a pattern together. Ready? Clap, clap, snap, snap. Clap, clap, snap, snap. Clap, clap, snap, snap. Clap, clap, snap, snap, pat, pat. Clap, clap, snap, snap, pat, pat. Are you with me? I'm going to speed it up. Clap, clap, snap, snap, pat, pat. Clap, clap, snap, snap, pat, pat. <laughs> well, I hope that got you smiling and I hope you try that with your little ones at home. Did you know rhyme and repetition through songs and movement allows children to learn sounds, patterns, fine motor skills, and more? One student who has been learning with us at the Carol Robertson Center since he was four years old is our 2021 scholarship recipient, Erwin Reyes. Now a graduating senior in high school, Erwin credits the Carol Robertson Center with providing him the opportunity to make friends and gain new experiences. Congratulations, Erwin. One of the neatest things about the legacy of the Carol Robertson Center is how its alumni stay connected from their earliest years to adulthood. I would like to introduce you to our two current board of director members who started their journey with the Carol Robertson Center as children in our programs. We are so proud and appreciative of these full circle Carol Robertson Center women, Lakeisha Nelson and Christine Brambilla. My name is Christine Brambilla, and I am a current board member of the Carol Robertson Center for Learning. My family joined the center in 1989 in the preschool program. I'm so honored to be here with you and to also be entering into a conversation and sharing our story with my colleague, Lakeisha. Hi, I'm Lakeisha Nelson. About three decades ago, I joined the Carol Robinson Center for Learning as a program participant. Now, several years later, after working for many nonprofit organizations focused on youth development, I've joined the Carol Robinson Center Board of Directors to give back to an organization that has done so much for me and my family. I'm so honored to be here with my friend, Christine. Christine! Hey, Lakeisha, how are you? So good to see you. Can you tell me a bit about your time um, at Carol Robertson Center and how beneficial it was to you and your family? Back in 1989, I was about four years old, so I don't really have many memories exactly. Like, I don't remember the first day, but my mom was great at collecting lots of photos. So I do remember there was this photo of I was told it was our first day at Carol Robertson Center and so I had a white dress and I had this big smile from ear to ear looking so eager so excited and later on those photos prompted some memories for example uh, 2929 before they added the addition there we used that parking lot for so many different celebrations and I always remember it being a family affair they were having festivals, they were having dances and celebrations, uh, they always took us to the museum, so there was just always something to do. It was a wonderful opportunity to really feel connected to the community, to such a vital organization that's a backbone to our communities. 
So with that, could you tell me a little bit about your experience and how you came to the center? Uh, what was that experience like? I joined Kara Robinson Center because my family um, needed a safe after school place for me to go. And it was the, the greatest thing. Everyone was always so excited for after school. You know, the first thing you see your friends, the talk will be, are you going to the center today? And the center just provided many parents and families with safe after school care. You knew that, you know, your child would be protected as they walked from the school to the center. Um, they would get a nice snack and they would engage in some great after school activities. The center really enhanced the community building and the team building aspect of life. And so it was a great foundation for setting that up. The things I've noticed about the center too is that it just, somehow we always find our way back to it. So was there an opportunity with which after your after school experience that you kind of found yourself at the doors of Carol Robertson Center for Learning again? And what was that like for you? Most definitely. So I attended the center for at least seven years of my life and it always held a fond place in my heart and I learned many lessons um, at the center. So during my high school years, when the time came around for me to participate in a service learning project, the Carol Robinson Center was the first location that came to mind. Um, so I did complete my service learning hours at the Carol Robinson Center for Learning and I was able to help little babies uh, with their homework and play games with them and kind of do things that were done for me. So it was a great experience. You alluded this, alluded to this during your introduction is that you've had this lifelong commitment to a career of service. So how has your experience with the Carol Robertson Center for Learning really impacted or influenced your career decisions? In attending the Kara Robinson Center, you saw a lot of teachers and a lot of volunteers that encouraged you and gave you a sense of confidence that you can achieve, could achieve anything. You know, having adults outside of your family encourage you and motivate you it instilled a sense of confidence in you that let you know that you can do anything. Organizations like the Kara Robinson Center always came back to my mind and learned that that was nonprofit work. And so I think that spearheaded my career in working for nonprofit. I worked for nonprofit all my life and at least 80% of my positions have been around youth development and youth focus. And I'm pretty certain that the Kara Robinson Center guided that course in my life. Can you talk a bit about your service on the board of Kara Robertson Center and what that means to you? I went from board member to secretary of the board. I'm currently the chair of the Programs and Impact Committee. I also serve on the Finance Committee. So it's been a great experience and it really has been that parallel process, really thinking through how are we moving um, professionally and how have I grown over the years? How have I found my voice in a similar way that my mother found her voice, right? So she wanted to really disrupt that intergenerational cycle of poverty. And so for her, it was about connecting with the family support specialist who's still involved in our family's life. And so they really believed in my mom and encouraged her and cheered her on and they believed in her before she believed in herself. And so with that, you kind of find that spirit. And as I've been on the board, I've found my voice as well to advocate on behalf of the children and families. How can we involve our parents and our families at a different level? How are we thinking through them in some of the tough decisions that we're making? And what can we really think to be bold and to really be true to our namesake of Carol Robertson and think about our commitment to social and racial justice, knowing that we live and reside within the communities that we serve. How has the Carol Robinson Center for Learning experience shaped you into adulthood? Because of the Carol Robertson Center for Learning, 
I learned to be brave. My mom felt emboldened, empowered to make decisions, to be a fierce advocate, and shifting that narrative from a deficit-based narrative to really thinking through how can we just shout and just really share the story of our community as one of resiliency, one of strength, to tell that story of how we've thrived over the years in our communities that the media and different perspectives label us in a negative light. But really thinking through, there's many of us and we are not exceptions to that, but there are many other successful stories and positive stories of families that have come from our communities. We just needed that one person or that adult to care for us. We needed that safe place, that pillar in the community to be there for us so that our parents could engage in the workforce, to really be bold, to inspire us to do something different and scary and to go outside of our community, go outside of what we've always known. When we try something scary, might, we might trip, stumble uh, a bit, but we always know that we have the Carol Robertson Center for Learning to come back uh, to us throughout our different lives. We're two examples of the products that the Kara Robinson Center for Learning produces. And it's just a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful example. And, and I think about that all the time. It's been a pillar in the community for generations. It's an honor to serve on the board, and it was an honor talking to you today. I've loved learning so much about you, Lakeisha. So thank you so much. Thank you. Well, folks, that was powerful. Christine and Lakeisha talked about the profound impact the Carol Robertson Center has had on them and their families. They talked about boldness and bravery, community and confidence. This is what the Carol Robertson Center is about. We are for families, by families, and with families. We work with families of little ones and our youth who participate in our out-of-school time program. You might catch them playing Gaga, exploring shop classes, or learning how to code. Throughout our history, our methods of community engagement have extended beyond the walls of our buildings. Over the past two decades, the Center's Family Child Care Network, which allows us to extend the reach of our evidence-based quality early education programs into even more communities across Chicago, has grown. Why? Well, did you know that children's brains are developing most rapidly in their earliest years of life? These are the years where they build foundations for future life success. We do that in our centers, but we also do that through our partners, like Agustina, who operates a family child care center in her home. I'm going to go hop on the jungle gym while you have the pleasure of hearing from Agustina and Carol Robertson Center's Senior Director of Community-Based Programs, Azucena Gonzalez. Take it away, friends. Robertson Center supports our network of family child care with funding opportunities. We provide funding for private uh, family child care homes in our network. We strengthen their knowledge of the curriculum and assessment um, and we provide um, that peer-to-peer -peer opportunity for them to meet with other family child care providers so that we can reduce isolation. So Agustina came in um, willingness to really provide services um, to the children in her care. Um, she is always willing to learn different things and adapt her learning and her style based on the needs of the children and the families. My name is Agustina Alvarez. I came to United States 25 years ago. 
So I became a single parent. I had to work sometimes uh, two jobs, and I struggled with the care of my own children. The main focus of my business was to help my community, was to help single parents or parents who are still in the school or teenagers with uh, children. So I started with this business. I realized that I needed to learn more about education and I finished my bachelor's degree in early childhood education. I joined to Pierre Robertson Center for the Head Start program and early Head Start. I think, you know, the Carol Robertson Center has impacted Agustina's work very positively. Um, she has a network of, you know, um, peers that she can collaborate with, that she reaches out to. Also, she's receiving um, support, you know. We have a dedicated, assigned uh, Carol Robertson staff that comes in and provides coaching and individualization for her, but also, um, really assesses the needs of the family that she has and does everything um, that you know possibly we can to connect the families with resources and services. Being part of Kerry Robertson made my program stronger because as I said, it's not only taking care of children of my community because my, uh, all my clients are my neighbors. And so to me, being part of this uh, Kerry Robertson uh, that uh, supported me in this, how to teach them and giving me the curriculums, the tools of how to teach kids in my community is, is great. Azucena and Azucena, thank you. Your work and reflections are the heartbeat of this organization. We thank you for sharing with us. Folks, you've heard it from me, but it has been solidified by the amazing partners who have shared their stories tonight. Did you know the Carol Robertson Center services span across the city in more than two dozen communities? You've also seen programs in action, our little ones, our youth, the reason we are here, but you have also heard us say it is the community in the broadest sense that allows the Carol Robertson Center to thrive. We now have a special opportunity to hear from two partners in our community. First, we celebrate our 2020 Kerba Merrill Friend of the Center awardee, the Old Town School of Folk Music. Let's hear from Jim Newcomb, CEO of the Old Town School of Folk Music. Chicago's youngest workers 
and to promote a more equitable society. Thank you, Jim. How great was it to see those kiddos? And thinking about the music taught, shared through the Old Town School of Folk Music, I can't help but want to do a little recess dance myself. Did you know music and movement is an integral part of child and youth development? No matter the age, we can all benefit from what it brings to us. I hope you all are at home getting your musical groove on with us. And while you're at it, have you texted to donate? Remember, you can text RECESS to 41444. Now, we have the great honor to recognize another partner of the Center. I'm pleased to introduce our 2021 Curb and Merrill Friend of the Center awardee, Illinois State Senator Patricia Van Pelt. Tune in closely. Senator Van Pelt is going to share some exciting news about the Center and our expanding impact. Take it away, Senator Van Pelt. First of all, thank you for the honor of receiving the Kerber Merrill Friend of the Center Award 2021. If I may, I would like to take a few minutes to tell you that the Carol Robinson Center for Learning Supporters and Friends about the high esteem in which I hold the center and its staff, its families, and the supporters for the work done every single day. As the elected Illinois State Senator for the 5th District since 2012 and a longtime Chicagoan, I have a strong working familiarity and appreciation for the Carol Robinson Center for Learning. In the communities that I serve and represent, as well as so many other communities across the Chicagoland area, the center is an anchor institution. The center provides rich, high quality learning, early childhood and youth development programs, quality programming for my constituents on the west side to ensure they have the best possible start for their learning and development. Especially now, in this current climate, we are seeing the need to focus on social justice, equity, and inclusivity, beginning with our youngest learners. The center, since its inception over 40 years ago, maintains that at, maintains that at the forefront and lives up to its namesake, Carol Robinson Daly. While I've been a supporter, an advocate, and an admirer of the center for years, I had the privilege of working with the center on a critical project that I would like to tell you about. Through the center CEO, Bella Mote, I learned that its main building in Little Village, which, which houses its early childhood classrooms, is connected to the state-owned side where the out-of-school time programs, the gym, the library, kitchen, all located in that space. The two buildings are connected through a common interest. The state-owned side in the, is in need of critical capital repair and improvement, and the state budget constraints didn't allow for such renovations to happen. The children and youth of these zip codes should have the same benefits of a safe, stimulating, and functional space in which to learn as children in any other zip code. And so I was happy to be a key champion for the Carol Robinson Centers working to find a creative solution. What was needed was called a conveyance, whereby the state of Illinois would convey the building and the land to its current occupant, the Carol Robinson Center for Learning, so that the center could begin the necessary repairs and improvements. So I'm proud because as, as of this moment, the conveyance of legislation that I championed has passed the Illinois House and it passed the Senate and Governor Prisker has signed it. I am so proud to have been able to be of service to the center to lift up his families, his children, the staff and the citizens of Illinois through the improvements of the space at 2929 West 19th Street. I congratulate the Carol Robinson Center on its annual celebration and I thank you for this award and your continued work with our children, our families, and our communities. Thank you.
Thank you, Senator Van Pelt. What an honor to have your support of the center and what a milestone to have our little village site convey to us. Let's give a round of applause for that. Senator Van Pelt, you are a powerful leader. Did you know throughout the history of the Carol Robertson Center, it has been led by four remarkable female leaders? One of those great women is Maria Whalen, a trailblazer and an advocate for children. Today, we pay special tribute to Maria on the anniversary of her passing. We are grateful to her service, her vision, and her dedication to all children. And as you can see, her passion and conviction lives on in all we do. Folks, this is the point in our annual celebration evening where I get to say some thank yous. There are so many to share because of the generosity that surrounds the Carol Robertson Center community is palpable. A heartfelt thank you to our annual celebration sponsors, whose names you have seen throughout tonight's event. And thank you to all of our donors. Whether you donate $10 or $10,000, the work you have seen showcased tonight is made possible because of your generosity. So if you haven't already, don't forget to text RECESS to 41444 to make a donation. Tonight, we've heard from Mayor Lightfoot, Dr. McDade, our alumni speakers, Christine and Lakeisha, and our Kerba Merrill Friends of the Center Award winners, Old Town School of Folk Music and Senator Patricia Van Pelt. But friends, we've saved a real treat for you as we close out the evening. Do you know Bella Mote? I'm telling you, you need to know Bella. She's the president and CEO of the Carol Robertson Center, and she is a fierce advocate for children and families of Chicago. Friends, I am so pleased to introduce to you Bella, who will be joined by Carol Robertson Center Board Chair Carter Culver to close out our evening together. It's been a pleasure hosting and enjoying recess with you tonight. Now let's hear from Bella and Carter as we close out tonight's event. Good evening, and thank you for that warm introduction, Maurice. I am Bella Mote, President and CEO of the Carol Robertson Center for Learning. Throughout the evening, you've seen the work of the Carol Robertson Center come to light. You've heard from our steadfast champions, and hopefully you've had some fun jumping into our recess theme. And if you've picked up your cell phone as we tend to do too much too often, I hope you've used it to text to donate. Margaret Mead shared that a small, caring, and committed group of individuals can change the world. In fact, that is very true of Carol Robertson Center for Learning story. Back in 1976, a group of families and youth and a spirited servant leader named Maria Whalen came together and said they must provide out-of-school time services for the youth on Chicago's west side. Named after one of the four little girls, Carol Robertson, who was killed along with three others in a church bombing in 1963 by the Ku Klux Klan, we educate, enrich, and empower our children in her memory and ensuring social justice and equity in all we do. We've grown leaps and bounds in our work in early childhood and youth development. But one thing that is true and at the forefront of everything that we believe is that the community drives transformational change. It is with this belief that no matter how much we do, where we do it, how we do it, we put communities at the center of our work, with families, by families, for families, with children, by children, for children, with communities, by communities, for communities. In fact, this spirit, this drive, this passion and dedication has allowed us to receive an Early Head Start Expansion Award that will allow us to serve 185 new infants and toddlers and their families. Our commitment to Chicago's youngest children and the youth that we serve 
is as true today as it was in 1976. Tonight's event and our work daily in our communities would not be possible without the generosity of our sponsors, whose names you have seen throughout tonight's event. I especially want to thank our change agent sponsors, Exelon and Larry and Mary Mages, in memory of an amazing leader and our founder, Maria Whalen. Additionally, a thank you to our champion sponsors, Adam Street Partners. I'm so pleased to close out our event tonight with Carter Culver, Carol Robertson Center's board chair. Carter's contributions as a board leader helped drive Carol Robertson Center's work and mission forward. Carter, let me toss it to you for some of your own reflections on this incredible organization. Thank you, Bella. I am proud to be here tonight, and more importantly, to give my time to the board of directors of such a long-standing and impactful organization. The mission of Carol Robertson couldn't be more important, and I am humbled by what this organization does on a day-to-day -day basis to support children and their families in so many ways. Impactful is such an understatement for what this organization does. It provides such real, necessary, and true value to families. On behalf of the board, I would also like to extend the deepest thank you and appreciation to Bella, her management team, and especially to the staff of the center who make it work day in and day out, including through such remarkably difficult times as over the last year with the pandemic and social and political unrest. As Bella said, we owe our thanks to many people here tonight. I also want to thank our leader sponsors, the Alford Group, Robert R. McCormick Foundation, William G. McGowan Charitable Fund, Bella and Raj Mote, PNC, Nick and Ariel Skodro, Joanne and Jim Steinbeck, and Walgreens. On behalf of our board, our staff, and our families, thank you. Tonight, we've heard from powerful voices in and around our community. We've seen the heartbeat of our programs, our children and our families, and we've celebrated the contributions of leaders like Old Town School of Folk Music and Senator Van Pelt. I hope throughout the evening, you've seen the power of the Carol Robertson Center, our commitment to community, to social justice, and to raising the next generation of leaders. This incredible organization has been supported by many tonight. And if you haven't already, I hope you will join us by making a gift. You can pick up your cell phone and text to donate. The details are on the screen. To all our amazing partners who joined us here tonight, to Maurice who brought our recess to life, and to each of you who have welcomed us into your homes in this virtual setting, thank you. Thank you for supporting the Carol Robertson Center for Learning. Have a great evening.